All right, in this video, we're going to be covering the process of performing a remote installation for Snap Deploy 5. Now, before we get started on this process, there are a couple of preparation steps that will be needed to be completed before you can actually perform this. Uh, depending on the operating system, you're going to need to disable one of the two. Um, if you are using XP or uh, XP, you'll be needing to disable the simple file sharing. Uh, if you are using Windows Vista or later, you will need to disable user account control, also known as QAC. Finally, you'll also need to enable the file and printer sharing as well. And then uh, the last bit of preparation is to ensure that TCP ports 445 and 25001 are on the exceptions list. Uh, generally speaking, 445 will be enabled uh, once file and printer sharing is, is uh, enabled. Um, however, it's always good to check. And depending on your organization, you may need to do this uh, in, or there may be multiple different ways to go about doing this, uh, depending on the setup as far as what security processes, firewalls, et cetera, are in place uh, in order to get these added. Moving on directly to our installation process. We have our management console open here. Go ahead and open up tools, install components remotely, and this will take us through the remote installation wizard. Now the steps uh, going forward are fairly self-explanatory, but we're going to run through them. The first section is going to actually be where you designate where the components needed for remote installation are being pulled from. Um, the default is registered components. Uh, if you have them on a separate piece of media, such as either a USB or uh, even a specific uh, location, um, either on the machine or, or a network location, you could also select these. We'll go ahead and stick with the default. It'll give us a list of the components that we have available. Now, for the most part, assuming that you already have a um, management console and everything already set up, likelihood is you're mostly going to be using this for management agents to deploy to um, machines that you'll need to, for instance, pull images from. Um, but in the event that, for instance, you needed to uh, specifically deploy or uh, install a OS deploy server, there is a bit of an extra step um, needed for this because you will need to actually designate the licensed server in which uh, this is going to be uh, used um, because that uh, that will require um, licenses uh, to be involved in that step. We're going to go ahead and select the management agent just uh, as a default. From here, you will need to enter the machine credentials that you're going to be uh, actually installing the components on, either an IP address or a machine name. You can select this option to, which is just going to restart, restart the machine after the installation is complete. It's an optional uh, feature, but it's typically recommended just to ensure that um, the installation process is finalized without issue. We'll include our user credentials for the machine. This will give you a quick summary page of what this is gonna look like. And then we can hit install. And I will pick this up once this is completed. And with that, our installation is complete. You'll see a message like this. We can go ahead and click OK, and that will finish the remote installation process. Uh, please look forward to additional videos in the future.